Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in Germany and in Austria over the past weekend. Yeah, I decided to go with this way because, you know, all the other leagues that I wanted to do actually next, there are still games to be played. And hey, I'm wearing Lusk. Yay! A rare win, a rare win, a rare win for my team. But everything but pretty and kind of lucky and still they look now in a pretty good position. But the overall uh, theme is, so in the title, continued dominance. We still, I think, Salzburg has nine in a row, one now for sure, and Bayern has ten in a row. How boring. How boring. The problem is that it is not those two teams that have to become weaker, it's the other teams that have to get their act together, which I think in... Germany seems to be more doable because in Austria, let's face it, Salzburg has at least twice the budget of the next uh, richest team, which would be Rapid Vienna, who are in addition suffering from a serious, how to say, sporting crisis in, the, in, in a sense they... Uh, it is more like a revival cult there than it is an actual soccer team in many ways because you know without the legends play uh, fight 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 but uh, don't present a new concept that's more or less how rapid vienna uh, run at this moment hence they even didn't make their wall but um the main reason for that one is that i wanted to get uh, you know put a little bit of my emphasis because we had also a german cup semi-final and the three teams that i have in there are up there although those two black ones in the week if I would have only made it by the league background. These guys, the New Jersey, would not even made it. And the other one would be just behind me because their results were not all that impressive overall. But, you know, you got to balance it out in many, many ways. The one thing that I have to say is that I think in both leagues, uh, the most exciting part is probably the battle against relegation. And there's a little bit for the European spots outside of Champions League because I think we can also say that the Champions League spots in both in both leagues are more or less already taken so it's basically who goes in europa league who goes in the conference league uh there is a little bit more exciting but i think the major excitement is for going down and even there in germany we had quite some decisive results let's start in my home country austria uh as i said usually i would not talk much about the relegation round, but since lask is now in there uh boy what a lucky win that was they were the better team Let's face it, but Altach really had it coming their way when uh, uh, Nani Zayamo got sent off when he even wasn't the last man, but the referee sent him off and the VAR didn't intervene. Which, yeah, first season Austria with VAR and it's still a big mess. It is still a big mess. And no one really understands, stands at least of all uh, the referees, to be honest. So uh, it's not great. Then uh, from that, uh, there was a free kick. And from that, uh, a penalty resu uh, resulted that Horvath could put in. And then uh, just after the kickoff, Nakamura, uh, you know, Lask stays on. And they make it 2-0. At this point, you think, okay, two goes up, a man up. You're going to win this game easily and do, and do something for a goal difference to boost. Although that for is not so important for Austria any, anymore. But, you know, if you miss chances where you're free on goal with the ball, you have all the time to concentrate, you cannot pull it in. I'm sorry, it's always going to be a fight. And that's exactly what, what happened in the 60th minute with all the changes that Lask made from that mo moment on. It just got worse. And Goigen, who is actually one of my favorite, favorite players over the last few years, the chance that he missed, it is just disgraceful in many, many, many ways. And then in the last few minutes, Altach got... Uh, the Kirkers again and Nuhio uh, had a few chances. I mean, he's a big, big, strong guy. I, 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 I thought that Lars Kloni uh, Monshine, who played their first half uh, season in in Linz, still belongs to Lask, but never uh, could get through in interesting on nine. I actually thought that he might score. But no, uh, it is um, Lask uh, who actually then can't con con in nine in the first minute. And I think that would have been even a kind of a valid penalty shot for Alter in there as well. The only thing that's good for Lask, the three points. And that with Reed losing and Reed just firing their coach because they they are suddenly afraid, of, although they were in second place in, in the table, but it's very, very tight, as we'll see. They changed the coach and it didn't go better because Tirol wins late. And Admira, who just went into first place, hardback losing. So everything went for Lask. 
despite them not really deserving that, they suddenly find themselves in first place, as we will see. As for the championship round, I think that the Corinthian Derby now went the other way. You know, in uh, Wolfsburg, Klangfurt won, in Klangfurt, Wolfsburg wins. In an exciting game, potentially. I didn't see it, but uh, sounds like it was fun. But Salzburg, you know, they could have clinched the title last week. They really made sure that, you know, with I think a point was enough. But they made it F emphatically with uh, Okafor, Adeyemi and Sucic. Or in the first half, 3-0. And then it's just Brandon Aronson um, and Kamara with the penalty very late on. Adding on, clinching a ninth, ninth title for Salzburg. And, you know, you really wonder who can challenge them. It's not there. I don't see anyone. Salzburg really need to lose a lot, a lot of players that they cannot fill up, but they have been very good in filling up the talent from below. Uh, probably what is, if you want to have a good atmosphere, the best game that you can watch in Austria is definitely Rapid Wien against Sturm Graz because both uh, fan bases are numerous and there's a, a good rivalry in there. So I think this is, at the moment, I would say the game to watch, although this might change uh, soon as well. I would actually put this one ahead of the Vienna Derby because of all the ar argliness that comes in that game. So uh, going into the standing Salzburg done, I mean, uh, at this moment already uh, 14 points clear of Sturm Graz who are very, very solid in the second spot with only Rapid Vienna having minor chance, but for that they would have needed to win that, 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 that one. So it's all going uh, into the Conference League, where at the moment it's third spot. If Salzburg wins the cup final, more than that, in, 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 in the second, third spot gets you in the Euro Euro Europa League, and then fourth spot will get you in the Conference League. Fifth spot, you'll go in the playoff, and then seven and eight also. Only the sixth place team cannot go to Europe, go figure, in any way. So yeah. Uh, that's where it's going on the bottom last suddenly find themselves in first place still they are the strongest rated team I don't think they will win this one I really don't think they win this one and if you look at down I mean Altak now looks down and out but uh, a turnaround is very very quickly Hartberg, Reed, Admira um, I think everyone can can, can can go in there and I even think that Lask is not out of the doldrums here really if they continue playing that badly uh, I think this could actually result in a rude awakening. Now, up come coming games. Lask has to play at Tirol, so 2v1. Uh, First game was 6-0 Lask. I'm sure they're going to lose this one. You see how Paulson did it at am And, you know, uh, in the Austrian Bundesliga, I think Wolfsburg uh, AC or Wolfsburg against Austria Wien, that's probably the one to look forward to. Uh, those are played midweek because on the weekend, it's all about the Austrian Cup final between Ried and Salzburg. I will take the over on any betting. Just uh, my gut feeling, because Reed is a little bit in disarray. Uh, although they had a pretty good season. They almost made it into the top six. And ever since then, some things fall falling about. They even beat uh, the one in the uh, Derby. So yeah, Austrian League, as I said, down is still kind of exciting. Uh, speaking of cup, let's move on to the German Cup, where we have a cup final that all ahead of the season no one would, would have expected between Freiburg and Leipzig, which at the moment are, I think, the uh, fourth and the fifth in the table. So actually it's a pretty good cup final and both teams have been playing each other kind of tightly, although the favorite has to be Leipzig. The games themselves were rather different. I mean, the first one, Freiburg went to Hamburg and, you know, Hamburg again will not make it into the Bundesliga most most likely, which is really a shame because they are one of the biggest teams in, Ger in, in Germany. But at the moment, uh, they're only in fourth or in fifth place. Um, and it is actually, before we go back to the cover, it, it, it's probably worth it. Werder Bremen uh, got a big win at Schalke, so they are now in first place and Schalke is also very much set have their eyes on finishing uh, in the top two, which would earn promotion to the two teams that have been relegated without promotion last season. In a way, it's good to see this, those two Giants back. And also with Schalke, I finally can get a blue jersey out there where I don't feel bad. And then it's between Darmstadt, St. Pauli and Hamburg. Um, it remains to be seen. They have to go through, re through relegation where we also will see who they might play. But it's not very certain. However, Freiburg went to Hamburg. And yeah, within the first half, the game was done. I mean, within 17 minutes with Peterson head, heading in at Höfler, um, huge crowd in Hamburg. Uh, that's why it's so sad to see them again not managing to come, to come up. 
uh, but Freiburg really uh, won this one very early on could cruise then into the first ever cup final. Uh, the goal for Ham Hamburg came late in the 88th minute. Union against Leipzig was a whole lot more even. With uh, Geraldo Becker even giving Union Berlin a half-time lead and they had Leipzig well under control. However, as Andre Silva penalty and then a very late header through Forsberg turned the game around. The massive crowd of Union uh, fans that even did not for the first few minutes uh, chant because of as a protest against Leipzig. It was just a side to side ball. I am more and more growing fond of this Union fan base because they are really, really, they are a very unified block right there. And yeah, they are a small team that are really, really uh, pulling, pulling the weight. Unfortunately, I was really waiting for overtime. Uh, there then with the hope that Union will do it, but it is Leipzig playing Freiburg. Leip Leipzig have already played two cup finals, losing one to uh, Bayern and losing one to Dortmund. So let's see if they can win it against Freiburg. I would so much love it if Freiburg could finally win a title. Uh, as for the weekend, uh, it started out with, with a bang with Wolfsburg 5-0 over Mainz. That, that, that was a big, a, a big one. Uh, Frankfurt against Hoffenheim. The first half was the Dicker half who scored an own goal and then got the equalizer. Frankfurt and largely the better team in the second half took a uh, deserved lead. Uh, through Kamada. However, a little bit out of the normal Ruto uh, gets it to 2-2. Two, two. Uh, the Köln game was interesting in the sense that uh, the talk afterward was not the Köln performance, which was so-and-so, but that uh, Anton Momor, after upon scoring a go-ahead goal, pulled out a package of his own coffee brand, handed it to a, to, to a fan, and then even after the game, here's my coffee brand, here's my coffee brand, here's my coffee brand. Coach not happy, he suspended the player for next week week's game and he's the big star of the team no doubt about it but the team actually uh played well bielefeld really 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 in a funk and also got rid of their coach uh this week uh another team in funk is actually borussia mönchengladbach however they had a quick tunnel lead in the third uh minute a penalty through Pennsylvania, and then embolo in the 13th and they thought there's a big 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 uh upset there because freiburg clearly was tired however in the second half freiburg turned the game around uh vincenzo grifo with the penalty uh Günther and philip Lienert has it in the a it is a thought famous win for freiburg no Stindl in stoppage time 3-3. Uh, Leverkusen sends down Kreuterfurt, so that is also settled. Uh, Kreuterfurt took an oil, oil, oil lead, but then Leverkusen just too good. Although I have, have to say there were two goals in, in, in there that uh, Fürth shot themselves in the equalizer. Uh, the ball came off the opponent and Schick then, who was clearly offside otherwise, pulled pull, pull within and uh, the 2-1 uh, through Serra Asmon was all down to the um, defense and the goalie not being adjust, adjusted to, to each other. And then with another Leipzig against Union. Very often cup games come in twos. And this time, in a way, a very similar game, but the outcome was completely different. This time it was Yusuf Paulsen. I mean, the first uh, half was largely a little bit better Union, but very, 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 very tight. Clearly there was a cup fight being played. Leipzig with the first shot and goal take the lead. However, Union half the second gear and actually manage an equalizer. Uh, once uh, Michael come, comes on, I mean, it was within a few seconds after he, he, he came on, he scores the equalizer in the 86th minute, in the 89th, with a brilliant assist. Uh, you know, uh, the attack comes on the side, he back heels it into um, uh, Behrens, who then scores the winner, and Union Berlin pull up the upset against Leip Leipzig, and uh, that was a big one. Actually, also a setback for Leipzig, where the good news for them is that Freiburg didn't win. Uh, so they still uh, kind of are ahead in the Champions League race. And I'm talking so much about this because Bayern against Dortmund, it, you almost can guess how this will go. I mean, uh, 50 minutes Gnabry, then another uh, goal is allowed by Gnabry, level level of Zorsky makes it 2-0, game done and dusted. Yes, Dortmund can pull one back, but at that moment I lost interest and I was watching other games. Uh, it finishes 3-1, Bayern clinched the title, big celebrations, blah, blah, blah. As I said in the opener, it is not Bayern's to get weaker. It is that the other teams, and especially Dortmund, have to get their act together. 
Also Leipzig, hold on to your players, make a project, maybe something like Klopp did it. Uh, who broke the dominance of Bayern? But you need to have a un unified vision, especially for, for, for Dortmund. Give, give the coach players that will help the coach play his style. Not these old players that are just out of sorts. My opinion there. Two big results on the bottom. Augsburg winning 2-0 in Bochum, which more or less relieves them of most of relegation trouble. And also Hertha wins the second game, the second final in a row, 2-0 over Stuttgart. Meaning that at this very, very, very moment, it is uh, Hertha out of the relegation zone with a cushion. Four points ahead of Stuttgart. So uh, it's basically between Stuttgart and Bielefeld at the moment who will go down and who will go into relegation. And you thought that Stuttgart was safe. We thought, at a, a, you know, two months ago that Bielefeld might be safe and then they went on a real tailspin there. So uh, rather rather decisive, where I said, Fürth is already down and Bielefeld looked down. Stuttgart probably has to go to relegation. And then we say it's Darmstadt, St. Pauli or um, Hamburg. Uh, to go in. So, yeah, <clears throat> it doesn't look good for Stuttgart after they had such a great season last time around. Uh, as for the European spots, um, as I said, Leipzig, Freiburg, it's two points. Kind of, it looks tightish, but I honestly think that Leipzig and Leverkusen will go in there. And then uh, let's see if Union, Köln, Hoffenheim, Hoffenheim have already a little bit of a distance there, but you know. Three points, this can be made, made up. Who goes into the Europa League? Who goes in the Conf 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 Conference League? I think Frankfurt, this is a tall order. So, you know, kind of all decided, as I always say. If we look for the next round, I think the big one, in a way, is Leverkusen against Frankfurt, just by name, but not really, because that's a game that Leverkusen have been dominating overall. Leip Leip Leipzig against Gladbach. So it's all about this fight for the Champions League spot. Hoffenheim, Freiburg. That might be actually, it's not only kind of a local derby, but that really could have some uh, huge implications going forward. Uh, as for uh, down, Hertha with their third final, Bielefeld, if they win that one, uh, Stuttgart have to play Wolfsburg. Also not an easy game, so you see already where this is going. In any case, uh, let me know what you thought about what the happenings in uh, the two Bundesligas. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!